that will produce desirable, transformative results. A plan is the scheduling of a sequence of events that will produce desirable, transformative results. Now, there are two components or earmarks when, when an individual has heard from God or is experiencing or receiving the plan of God. A is favor, F-A-V-O-R, favor. Everyone say the favor of God. that caused, um, I think was the uh, catalyst in terms of God speaking to me about starting uh, the New Life Church was um, I heard this movement in my spirit that people had become very religious in terms of church attendance, seeing, however, very few results. Seeing very few results. That's the definition of being religious. When you are actively involved in what you have surmised uh, followership of Jesus Christ to be, but, but, all, but all of that does not weigh in in terms of results in your life, results in your health, results in your finances, results in relationships, positive results in terms of elevation in life. If you're not seeing, if one is not experiencing results, that person has probably become religious. And so here's some hashtags that, that I like to use from time to time to help kind of um, document uh, various positions as far as the lesson is concerned. Hashtag uh, one, remember this, these are uh, words that are run together, no spaces uh, with the um, number sign or hashtag sign um, being the first thing. Hashtag hearing from God. So it is important. Uh, it is critical that the believers know uh, uh, and are skilled at being able to hear from God. Hashtag two, revealed plans. Whenever one is hearing from God, it is called God revealing himself to us, revealing his plan, his, I heard someone praying it this morning, next steps. I've been teaching on that a few weeks, a few months back. Knowing next steps uh, are the keys to life. What one is to do next. What comes next as far as connecting with the plan of God? What comes next in terms of um, being able to get your family where God wants that family to be? Your income where God wants your income or uh, our income to be? Getting your health, your physical health to be where God wants your physical health. What is, what is the next step from God's um, perspective? Then thirdly, hashtag the plan changes situations. No spaces. The plan. And I have this in here intentionally not a plan, not some plans, not plans in plurality, but the plan changes situations. Now, there is a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is the way of death. The end of your plan or my plan may bring cessation, may bring an end. But when God has a plan, his plan always connects you to his next level of higher living and higher experiencing and then uh, experiences. Then finally, uh, hashtag for just do his plan. I, I love what it, it was uh, the biological mother of Jesus, the Christ said in St. John chapter two, when they had a problem and the problem was an embarrassing one. And um, uh, Mary comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, says, this is the beginning of his ministry. First miracle in Cana of Galilee. And uh, Mary, the mother, says to Jesus, they run out of wine. And he asks the question, what does that have to do with me? And then she changes her um, purview uh, and connects with the disciples, the retinue, and, and says to them, whatever he says. How many of you are with me? What, whatever he says to you to do, do it. Don't do your plan and his plan. Don't do what it was your parents taught you to do as, as far as, you know, spiritual things are concerned. God says, whatever I tell you to do, do exactly that. No more, no less. And what a lot of people do is they run into challenges because they have never become persons of order. 
You know, I, when ministers are first starting out in a church, uh, one of the things I'll tell them, I'll, I'll give them a certain amount of time to teach. No, they become more experienced and, you know, my trust level gets better. And I, I know they're uh, order uh, prone. You know, they'll follow the orders of the house. But at first, no, no, no you, you're not going to have a long time to mess up. You're not going to have a long time to get in your flesh. Now, I know some of y'all feel a certain way about that, but that's why you're not the leader. See, God teaches certain things as you go along. And he gives you a certain experience that no one else in the house has but you. And so I'll say to them, to them uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the case is. And it doesn't matter how well they present. My sons are no different. I tell them the same thing. No matter how well they present, I'm looking for, can you follow my instructions? Because I know if you will not follow my instructions while I am present, when I'm absent, it's going to be bizarre. This church won't even look like itself. Glory to God. So what I'm saying to you is it becomes an, a unique ability for believers to follow the plan of God. What did he say? And, you know, there are believers who have not heard from God in a long time. I don't know how you make it without God honoring your steps. Uh, ordering your steps, better yet. All right, let's get into it. Um, been up six minutes already. Let's hurry, 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 George. You got other things you got to do. Glory to God. Biblical faith producing results are contingent, as I said to you already, on the six what I call components of faith. Biblical faith producing results are contingent on the six components of faith. Or, uh, and, and I want us to understand that corresponding action, uh, which is number four, are under our investigation right now. So this message will make sense when you see it through that lens. I've told you that um, there are six vital areas where one can determine whether or not he or she is in faith. First of, God, first of all is hearing, hearing, um, hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if you're not hearing from God on a regular and consistent basis, on a daily basis, I make it my business to hear the word of God literally every day, several times during the day, and it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I am hearing the word of God. It's not always he hearing from myself because you say I'm your pastor, so that should be your primary way of hearing. So you can stay, so you are staying or uh, remaining connected to the vision of the house. But I'm hearing the word of God every day consistently. I listened to the word of God for probably three hours this morning. I was up at by 430 and first thing I did was turn on the word of God listening, hearing the word of God while I'm getting dressed, while I'm taking a bath, while I'm getting ready to get out of the door. When I get in my vehicle, I put the word of God back on hearing because that faith comes by hearing. You cannot get past that faith for success in life comes by hearing, hearing, H-E-A-R-I-N-G, hearing, hearing ad infinitum. That's the Latin suffix. Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And I'm tired of hearing the word of God. You are <laughs> delaying yourself from supernatural progress. So hearing is one. Uh, number two is receiving. Everything you hear, you don't necessarily, one does not necessarily receive. I heard that this morning in the spirit. Um, remember, as many as received him, St. John chapter one, for as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So that tells us right there, everyone that hears does not receive. Everyone that's in a church building, a church plant, a physical building is not necessarily receiving. There are some people that think they know where you're going and they close off before you get into it. There's some people who become so familiar with ministry, they uh, se have separated themselves from hearing the word of God. So hearing, then receiving, then thirdly is believing. These are all verbs, action words, believing. Everything you hear, you don't necessarily believe. And this is why faith confessions become um, very necessary. This is why uh, the necessity of hearing the word of God over and over again. I mean, I, I was hoping to get into this. I won't get into it today, but... Uh, I saw over in the book of Gideon, uh, chapter six, where <laughs> Gideon has God sends Gabriel, who, who the theologians believe to be Gabriel, the angel, the messenger angel to Gideon. He is hiding in the wine press because the Midianites uh, have taken over and man, Israel is in is in a quandary. 
And so this angel comes to him and says, thou mighty man of valor, watch it, the Lord is with thee. Now with thee uh, is present is. Okay, y'all not working with me. He's hiding, but while he's hiding, the angel says, the Lord is with thee. What does that mean? That sometimes you are the purpose and God is with you. So you got to keep hearing it until you move into purpose so that the God that is with you can now elevate. And, and then he still didn't believe it. He put out the fleece test, test and all that. And later on in the narrative, uh, God tells him to go spy out the Midianites. And while he's spying out the Midianites, he hears two of them talking. So he's discreetly um, plugged in to, 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 to scope out the landscape. And he hears two men talking and they're, one is telling the other about a dream he's, he's had. And he tells the other man, one uh, person A tells person B, uh, I, I had a dream the other night and I saw Gideon coming and the Lord using him to wipe us out and give them, the Israelites, our territory. Gideon heard that, which he had already heard from the angel Gabriel, and he is still shrieking into, I can't do this. But he hears it the second time and goes and tells the Israelite people, get up, let's get ready to do battle. Well, why couldn't he do that the first time? Because every time you hear something does not mean you have received it. When he heard it the second time, he believed it. Glory to God. So hearing, everyone say hearing. hearing. Then receiving, say it, receiving. receiving. Thirdly is what? Believing, believing. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned or condemned. And fourthly is acting. James chapter 2, verse 22 through 26. Won't take the time to go through there. And then um, fifthly, of course, is after you have heard, after you have believed, after you have uh, heard, received, believed, you've acted, then what is next? No, that's six. What is, what is five? Speaking, speaking, speaking. Speaking, remember Mark chapter 11, verse 22, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And then sixthly is thanking or praising. You're entering into his courts with praise you for what he has already done, that which your eyes have not yet seen. Your heart has not yet believed or received, but you know the word has promised it. And so you ask God and you have taken him at his word. And so accordingly now you are rendering forth your praise or your thanksgiving. So now let's look at this. Joshua chapter six, verse one. And I'm still in the prelude uh, stage of this teaching. I, I asked myself this question this morning in prayer. What would have happened when we're talking about maximize results as a result of God's action plan or plans. What would have happened uh, were Israel to have tried to engage in, in, in war with, this, with the city of Jericho rather than to march six days in silence? God didn't tell them to fight in that battle. Listen, they're going to take territory. And God does not tell them to fight. That's the difference of knowing a plan from God. Because your natural mind would have told you that if we're going to take something from someone who owns it, what are we going to do? We're going to have a conflict. But there's not, not a conflict. God says, let's take it from the top. Uh, the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel, the impending danger that comes from these potential enemies. None went in and none went out. So all the people of Jericho are on lockdown. So you, you not, have not experienced um, the first shutdown, okay? So here it is. And none came in. Next verse, please. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho. Now, J Jericho is still inhabited by the people that live there. But God says what? See, in the realm of the spirit, what? I've already given this to you. I wonder how many things God has already given you <laughs> that somebody else is inhabiting right now. And you're being moved by what your eyes can see. 
Glory to God. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I've given into thine hand Jericho and into the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, or the warriors. Next verse, please. And you shall compass or encircle the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. You will march around the city once. A complete revolution or circle around the city once every day for six days. Say it with me. God's plan of action. God's plan of action. Now, does this make sense? Y'all are back in the building, a few of you. Y'all can talk back. Does this make sense? Now, what would you have contrived? I need, I need a weapon. I, I, I need some uh, means by which I'm going to take or upseat someone from something that they heretofore have owned. But God says, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to give you a plan. Walk around the city every day once for six days. Now, this would have thrown many of you that I'm looking at right now that are looking at me. This would have thrown you because this does not compute to you. So this is why I'm telling you we can have maximized results when we follow God's plan. I wonder if you had been in this congregation, what you would have been saying to Pastor Matthew, excuse me, Moses, when he said, we're going to walk around the city every day for the next six days once. We're going to encircle the city every day for six days. And, and watch this now. And God's going to give us everything. The king. The militia. All of the spoil. And we're not going to have to fight. You're going to be sitting there looking at me like you're looking at me right now. But maximized results can only come when one has heard and obeys the plan of God. And, the shall, and, and, and ye shall compass, uh, compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Next verse, please. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. Everyone say the plan. The plan. Se seven times. On the last day. Well, well, well we did six days circling the city once. Pastor Matthew, excuse me, Pastor uh, I, uh, Joshua, I don't know why we got to walk around this whole city. It don't make sense. My feet are tired. Let me, let's just deal with that for just a minute. Your feet may be tired, but how tired are your feet going to be when you are, are enjoying your percentage of the spoils? That you have see something happens in the mind physically when your mind is elevated, your feet stop hurting. See, some of us now, the only reason your feet are hurting is because you haven't seen God's picture of elevating your life his way. You're still focusing on the natural because you haven't seen the supernatural. Watch it now. Seven times you'll do this. And the, the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Next verse, please. And it shall come to pass that when they have made a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and, and, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall shall ascend up every man straight before him. Watch it now. They're going to run out before you. Keep going. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest. And the rest of it basically says, he told them exactly the plan of God. He, he called all of the leaders together and gave them God's plan and not his plan. Now, if you continue reading the narrative or if you're familiar with this, you already know that they took Jericho and spoiled the entire city and had maximum results because they did it God's way. I'm wondering how many Jericho cities are in your future? I say it, Lord. How many Jericho cities have bypassed you 
only because you didn't have a divine plan from God. Say it another way. How many opportunities have you missed because you didn't recognize the difference between your plan and God's plan? One more time. How many things did God want to bring into your life by way of his plan that you forfeited because you're stuck in doing business your way? The old people said it in my old experience this way. I'll hold your peace, son. The Lord will fight your battles. I'm not wired like that. So there's been a good, long, lengthy period in my time. I, I engaged my own battles and was all right with the results. But I have learned, hold your peace. The Lord will fight your battles. See, he has a plan. Say it with me. God has a plan for me. So receiving God's plan of action causes all other conditions, present conditions to be diminished. Receiving God's plan of action causes all other plans and conditions and even seasons to be diminished. So what is a plan, George Matthews? A plan is the scheduling, please hear this, it, the scheduling of a series or, or sequence of events that will produce desirable transformative results. A plan is the scheduling of a sequence of events that will produce desirable transformative results. Now, there are two components or earmarks when, when an individual has heard from God or is experiencing or receiving the plan of God. A is favor, F-A-V-O-R, favor. Everyone say the favor of God. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming. I thought you all would be glad to be back. Uh, the favor of God. Say it again. The favor of God. Here's my homemade definition. God's unusual ability, God's unusual ability to involve the assistance of others. God's unusual ability to involve the assistance of others and resources to bring people into his intended purpose of strength and elevation. To bring us into his intended purpose of strength and elevation. See, this will... <laughs> Some people get saved and they still have a player spirit. They still have a hustling spirit. They still have a gimmicky spirit. They, they still have a begging spirit. They have a lot of spirits they never uh, got rid of only because they have not received a teaching to help them understand God already has your path figured out. He doesn't need your hustle. He don't need you pimping the people. He doesn't he need you begging. I, I mean, I, my God, if I don't ever see another one, that'll be too soon for me. I mean, hustling. I mean, hustling. People hustle churches hard. They hustle you like you wouldn't believe. And even some pastors hustle their congregations hard. Uh, money gimmicks. Well, there are a lot of pastors that couldn't wait to get people in church because they were going broke with resources. They thought if I get the people here and run my games, I get the money. But God's not a, a hustle God. He's a God that has a plan. And when you see the plan, you will see the results. Amen. So favor, God's unusual ability to involve the assistance of others and their resources, and even separately resources, to bring us into his intended purpose of strength and elevation. Here's proof of that. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace, all grace abound toward you, that ye have always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Here it is again. And God is able. Say it again. God is able. To make all grace abound towards me. That I, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That's the favor of God. Shout it out. That's the favor of God. 
Then letter B is the miraculous. So you have the favor of God in the plan of God. And then letter B, you have the miraculous. You have God's power, God's strength, and God's ability. The miraculous, God's ability to override the natural order of things. I'm going to get to that in another few moments' time. The natural order of things to produce the promised results of faith. God has a way to override what was naturally supposed to happen to you to bring you to a consequence of faith producing results. For example, Ephesians chapter three, verse 20 from the Amplified Classic. Now to him, God, who, who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. God has a miraculous way to get you out of debt. Glory to God. Let, uh, let me say this. I heard this this morning too in my spirit. Uh, let's just say, for example, everyone under the sound of my voice now lives in a 5,000 square foot home. Okay, 5,000 square foot home. All right, receive that. That's a good thing. A 5,000 square foot home. And um, let's just say you want to renovate that home. You want to renovate it, okay? Now, if you involve yourself in renovation only on the weekend, how long is it going to take you to renovate that 5,000 square foot space? 5,000 years? <laughs> All right, that, okay, that's good. That's probably about right. Listen to this. If you're going to renovate the way you've been thinking, you can't just hear the word of God on the weekends. Some of us could have been changed. Excuse my grammar. But we, we're not working on it often enough. That's why I hear the word of God every day because my faith has to go to another level every day. God's timetable works along with his revealed plan. When you get the, the, you get the revealed action plan, the timetable is, 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 is sped up. Sometimes things are delayed because people are on the wrong plan. Thirdly, God's movement is always respective, please hear this one, of the wills of others who are involved in your life. God will not override their will to answer your prayer.